check sound
Hello, good morning. So, bago tayo mag-start yung program proper natin, uh, introduce muna natin yung ating mga sarili at saka yung program na bilang tayo. Good morning, I'm Rachel Gonzaga and my program is PTC or Professional Teaching Certificate. Good morning, I'm Ray Kenneth Igmat Arana, student number 2013-74979. My program is Bachelor of Arts in Multimedia Studies or BAMS. I'm Hubert Abao, uh, program by BAMS. I'm Zaren, um, PTC. I'm Regina, uh, PTC. Okay, so yung mga students natin ano, via web stream, okay, introduce na. <laughs> and di natin sila maririn again. Pero napapanood nila tayo. Uh, good Good morning to everyone. Good morning sa mga estudyante na nandito and even sa mga estudyante na nasa uh, iba-ibang learning centers and of course abroad. Ano, so live tayo via web stream. Uh, so good morning to everyone and in behalf of the UPOU officials, faculty and staff, we are all welcoming you to the UP Open University. Uh, before we start our program proper, may invite everyone for the national anthem. Bayang magiliw, talas ng silanganan Alag ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay Lupang hinirang, duyan ka lang magiting Sa manulupig, di ka pasisigil Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bagaw May dilag ang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal Ang kislap ng wataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning Ang bituwing na araw niya kailan pa may di magkidilim Lupa ng araw ng walhati pagsinta Buhay ay langit sa piling mo Aming ligaya na pag may mga api Ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo Thank you. Hapo na tayo. We will proceed for a video presentation. The University of the Philippines Open University delivers its courses through the open and distance mode of learning. Distance education is a form of organized teaching and learning where the student and teacher are physically separated and technology is used to bridge this physical and transactional gap. Distance education can be distinguished by the following basic characteristics. The learner and the teacher are physically separated from each other for most of, if not all, throughout the learning process. Technical media, print, audio, video, or computer are used to deliver the learning content. There is two-way communication between the teacher and the learner through printed communication, electronic mail, telephone, teleconferencing, computer conferencing, and video conferencing. There is an educational institution involved in the planning, preparation, delivery, 
and accreditation of learning. Open learning is an educational philosophy in which study programs are designed around the student's context. Open universities espouse a philosophy of open learning which differs in degree and dimension from institution to institution. For the UPOU, openness means widening access to quality higher education. At UPOU, Distance education is delivered primarily through e-learning. E-learning is a generic term for all technologically supported learning using an array of teaching and learning tools that utilize electronic media. As a learner, you will be interacting with several people and materials during the course of your study. They include content, the faculty in charge, and tutor, other learners, learning management system, program advising, and student support. Each one is an essential component of your learning experience. The initial point of your study will be the course modules. In addition to the modules, you will also receive a course guide. The course guide is basically your roadmap to the whole course. It tells you all you need to do in your class. Your FIC will also require you to read or view additional online references, like online articles, websites, and video. At UPOU, the teacher or professor is called the Faculty in Charge or FIC. Your FIC selects the content and learning resources you will study and sets the learning activities and assignments. Classes with a large number of students are normally divided into sections, each of which is handled by a tutor. The FIC for the course will supervise all of the tutors. In addition to the course materials and the teacher, you will be interacting with other learners enrolled in the course. As an adult learner, you can share your ideas and experiences with your co-learners to make the whole learning experience more enriching. Most of these interactions will take place asynchronously. Except for live chats, students are usually not required to enter the course site at the same time. This gives you the flexibility to participate in online activities at your preferred time. All course interactions will take place over the internet. At UPOU, students and faculty members meet in a virtual campus called My Portal. My Portal is where you can access all your courses and other relevant information related to your studies. Each online course or subject would have its own virtual classroom or course site on My Portal. At the program level, you will receive academic guidance from your program chair. Contact your program chair for advice on the following academic matters. Program of study, substitution of courses, waiver of prerequisite, permission to take courses more than the prescribed academic load, planning for thesis or special problem, and other academic concerns. Since you are geographically separated from the university, we have set up a student support system that you can access if you have any administrative concern or problem. The primary aim of student support is to assist students like you to learn successfully. 
The Learning Center is the hub of student support. Contact your Learning Center coordinator if you have any concern regarding application for admission, registration, student orientation, distribution of course materials, dropping of subjects, filing a leave of absence, examinations, accessing library materials, face-to-face -face tutorials if available, and tutorials on basic computer and internet literacy. Now that you have understood how UPOU online courses operate, we shall discuss how you can get organized as a distance learner. Once you are officially registered, the course pack will be sent to your preferred address. You will also receive instructions on how to log in to my portal and access the course sites for the courses you enrolled. As a UPOU student, you are expected to participate in online learning activities and other course requirements. Depending on the course, you may be required to submit assignments like essays, reports, problem sets, case studies, or projects. Examinations at UPOU are administered in a proctored sit-down setting at an officially designated venue. In certain cases, students may also be allowed to take an exam online. For more information, please visit the UPOU official website. And now to give us more about the UP Open University uh, as a distance education, he is a full-time faculty member of the University of the Philippines. The University of Open the Philippines University. Open University delivers its courses through the Open. Okay, <laughs> okay, na hindi <laughs> ulitin. Okay. Now to give us uh, more about the UP Open University, he is a full-time faculty member of the UP Open University, uh, also a program chair of the Diploma of Research and Development uh, Management, and our and, and also our the, the, the director of our information office, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Primo Garcia. Good morning to everyone. Uh, magandang umaga sa ating mga sudyante uh, in all of the learning centers all over the country and those who are tuned in uh, over the internet. No? We have our uh, general orientation uh, live stream at upounetworks.net. Uh, before anything else, um, I would like to just ask no, for those who are here at the headquarters, uh, who are uh, who are here at the headquarters? What are your courses? What are your majors? Who's taking up AA Associate in Arts? Nobody. BAMS. Uh, how about the others? MDE. Uh, PTC. Okay. So um, before anything else, uh, what is your idea of distance education or online learning? Anybody? There is no right or correct answer. You will not be graded. Yes, ma'am? Do you have, uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word distance education or e-learning? So 
it's open and it allows you to study at home no? over the internet. What else? Anybody? Sa ating mga naka-login sa internet, any other ideas? So, uh, the UP Open University is a uh, independent autonomous campus of the University of the Philippines system. We are not part of UP Los Baños, although we're located at the uh, in Los Baños. No? We have our own chancellor, and uh, we were established in 1995 to uh, provide quality education, especially to students who are based in areas where, where there are no UP campuses. Next slide. So our headquarters is there. For those who are not, uh, who are based uh, in other learning centers, you can see on the screen the uh, a photo of our main building at the uh, UPOU headquarters in Los Baños. And uh, we also have a satellite office in UP Diliman. Next slide. So this is our own oblation, which is a bit different from the oblation uh, of other UP campuses. As you can see, there is a ribbon, it's a flag, no, swirling around the uh, oblation figure and reaching to the sky. It represents the uh, possibilities no? that uh, is uh, available in open and distance learning. Next slide. So that's our official seal, which is the same you know, as the other UP campuses. And of course, our university hymn, no? which is UP, na ma UP naming mahal. So, dapat i-memorize nyo yan. So, uh, in the video that was shown earlier, you, uh, we have discussed the features of distance education. So, there's just one thing that I want to emphasize. Although the students are physically separated from each other and from their teacher, that doesn't mean that there is no communication between and among them. So, that's the difference between distance education and the correspondence school uh, in the early days. And then... Um, Somebody would ask, no, anong difference yan be, uh, sa self-learning considering the fact na I could just go to the internet, read the same materials, and learn by myself, no? It's different in the sense that there is no accredited institution verifying your learning process in self-learning. Whereas here, there is a university that accredits your learning and has a uh, quality assurance system no, to make sure that that happens. Next slide. So these are the advantages of distance education. I'm sure before you decided to get into UPOU, you are already aware no? these are precisely the reasons why you entered or why you chose UPOU. Next slide. Next slide. So there are different modes of distance education in different open universities. But for UPOU, it's e-learning, meaning we make use of electronic media to facilitate learning. Next slide. So in the video, you have also sh uh, been shown the uh, different uh, elements of teaching and learning in UPOU courses. And um, we'll be going through them one by one. Next slide. So the first uh, point of study would be the content, no? the course materials. Uh, starting this trimester, the materials uh, will be uh, will be no longer printed. No, you would have to order if you want print copies of the module. It provides flexibility on the part of the students, meaning if you don't want to spend more, then you don't have to order the print material. Secondly, it also saves resources because, as we all know, printed books makes use of. Uh, trees, no? Na nakaka-apekto din yan sa ating environment. So that's also part of our sustainable practice. So the course pack basically includes your printed modules if you ordered and the course guide, the CDs if there are CDs um, of videos no, required in the course and other online materials. Next slide. 
So it's very important that you read the course guide because it's the roadmap to your course. It tells you the schedule, uh, what are the activities that you need to do in a certain period of time, and also the house rules, um, policies on plagiarism, intellectual dishonesty, uh, late submission of assignments, and the like. Next slide. So that's the point to remember when it comes to course guide. You have to read it thoroughly. This is a problem uh, for some students. No? At the end of the semester, magi email yan sa FIC. Sir, ma'am, when is the final exam? It's in the course guide. No? When is the deadline for submission of this and that? No? It's in the course guide. So you have to read the course guide thoroughly. Next slide. So in addition to the modules, which can be either in print or in PDF form, you are also required um, most of the time to read online articles, reports, and view videos. In certain situations, you would uh, also be provided with CDs of interactive uh, materials. Next slide. So the faculty in charge is your teacher for the course. They co we call him or her the FIC. So if you notice, the um, functions or roles of the FIC is quite similar to the traditional teacher. No? Hindi naman masyadong naiiba, except perhaps for uh, developing, uh, developing the virtual classroom. No? Next slide. Now, for large classes, uh, the FIC may tap tutors to handle the different sections. The role of the tutor would be to facilitate online learning, provide feedback, ma mark the assignments, and the like. Next slide. For more, uh, most graduate courses, the FIC and the tutor are one and the same. But for large classes, especially undergraduates, uh, where we have more than 100 students per subject, uh, there will be several tutors that will be under the supervision of the FIC. Next slide. So the point to remember is um, when interacting with your classmates and your teachers, make sure that you follow the ticket guidelines. Now, most of these are available in the internet, and sometimes a teacher will provide a link to those sites. Next slide. So all of those interactions take place in a virtual classroom called My Portal. Next slide. And um, for those who are not yet familiar with Moodle, then there is a student guide to Moodle available in the orientation kit or also online in the website. No? Next slide. Now, for program advising, no, this is an essential part of the teaching and learning process. You have to consult your program advisor or program uh, chair when it comes to those uh, items listed on the screen. No? Uh, don't ask your student, uh, your learning center coordinator for academic matters. All academic matters, those relating to the courses, must be addressed to the faculty in charge or to the program chair. But you must first uh, settle your problem or concerns with your faculty in charge. Next slide. Uh, in terms of student support, no, uh, in the video it was discussed that we have student support to help students learn more successfully, considering the fact that the students are geographically dispersed. So for Los Banos, for those who are um, affiliated with the Los Banos Learning Center, then it's LV, no? LALAP, who will be your LC coordinator. So have, if you have concerns regarding registration, yung mga filing of leave of absences, dropping, and the like, then you can ask LV. Now for those who are based in other learning centers, then you have your learning centers uh, learning center coordinators uh, there to contact. Next slide. We have turned uh, 10 learning centers all over the country which are based mostly in UP campuses and other state universities and one virtual learning center for students who are based abroad. Next slide. So these are um, the concerns that will be addressed by your learning centers, uh, particularly your learning center coordinators. So next slide. Now, we also have testing centers. These are basically examination venues. For your student support needs, you still have to contact your learning center coordinator that has been assigned to you. Next slide. So the first step in getting organized as a distance education learner is, of course, attend the general orientation. 
which is uh, done either face to face like we're doing right now or online next slide so after that enter the core site which is uh, can be found at my portal that upou.edu.ph next slide and uh, you will be required to do certain uh, activities first you will be required to read the lessons which are either available in the modules or in different online re learning resources you know? next slide and the most common activity for many courses would be the online discussion forum so if you're familiar with um, discussions in Facebook no or in other discussion groups it's almost basically the same but this is moderated by the faculty in charge or the tutor the faculty in charge would pose a question uh, that will enable the students to expound on the theories being discussed or apply it to certain uh, situations, particularly uh, your personal or professional context. Next slide. So there would be assignments. It could range from two to four or even more per semester. Uh, it can come in the form of essay, projects, case studies, problem sets, or applications. Next slide. And other online activities would also be required depending on the course, like online quizzes, chats, uh, video conferencing, webinar, and uh, other collaborative activities. So it doesn't mean na pagka online, you will not be doing collaborative activities or group projects. No, In certain courses, the, that would still be required. Instead of meeting each other, you can con uh, make use of Skype or other collaborative learning tools like uh, Google Docs or chats or you can even call each other no, to organize your group work. Next slide. So things to remember when it comes to uh, your online activities, participate in online activities regularly and visit the course site at least twice a week no? because there are situations when the, your teacher post an announcement no so you have to be aware of that you have to uh, open your email accounts regularly and it is important that you submit your requirements on time different faculty in charge would have different policies some are quite strict they would deduct uh, like three to five points every day that you are late some would be more lenient so it depends now you have to ask your faculty Normally, the policy is always uh, written or expressed in the course guide. Now, uh, it's also important that if you have any question regarding the course, if there's anything that you don't understand, if uh, you have problems understanding the requirements, no, like assignments, what the teacher expects from you, then email the faculty in charge or the tutor. Next slide. Examinations are done in proctored settings, but in some cases they can be done online. Some FICs are also uh, delivering their examinations through my portal. So the teacher or the, the tutor would be announcing that beforehand. Now for those who are abroad, no, you can take your exams in any of the uh, consulate or embassies, no, uh, Philippine embassies abroad. Uh, we can also find a, a suitable tutor for you, but in uh, other cases, the examinations are conducted online. Next slide. So that's a picture of an online examination, which is proctored. Next slide. So here are some general tips that you can bear in mind. Read the course guide carefully. Check the deadlines and requirements and examination schedule. Uh, you have to uh, be aware of the deadlines for uh, dropping, removals, no, all of these can be found in the academic calendar, which is also available in the website. And familiarize yourself with the course house rules. Now, what are the expectations of your teachers? Next slide. Even if you are doing this online, it would be better that you also uh, prepare some notes. No, more often than not, you will be required several materials on a certain topic. And it would be nice to have your own notes uh, to indicate no, or to summarize your understanding of the lessons. And this would help you in reviewing for your examinations. And make sure that you are clear about your FIC specific instructions and requirements. So if you have any question or if you have any doubts, 
then contact your FIC. Participate also in online learning activities and avoid plagiarism by citing, uh, properly citing your references. Now, FICs have different policies when it comes to citing other people's work in online discussion forums. No? Some FICs would be as strict no? to require students to cite a bibliographic entry you know, for all the sources that they have mentioned in the discussion forum. But for me, discussion forums are conversations. No? There are, there's a tendency for some students to treat it as an essay. So when a teacher posts a question, normally they would write a novella, no? Ganun kahaba, no? Parang defense na siya ng isang thesis. And pagka ganun kasi, the conversation doesn't happen. Uh, your classmates wouldn't read what you have written kasi masyadong mahaba. So be concise. And this would encourage people to react to what you have mentioned and then discussion ensues, no? So dapat, uh, like for instance, in my class, I just, if you, if you cite other people's idea or work, you can just mention according to Bagarinao 2010, no? You don't have to write everything down, the title, the publisher, and all. Next slide. Now, so if you do well enough in, uh, in your courses, then we'll be meeting you again in either two, four, or seven years. <laughs> in our headquarters for the graduation ceremonies. <coughs> so uh, if you have question, um, you can contact, you have there the contact details of your uh, faculty offices or the registrar's office and follow us on our social media sites. You have any question? Um, any concerns, no? This is the time. Are there any questions on the uh, online? Okay. So, um, I think another important issue is time management. Uh, nagtataka siguro kayo why uh, you're only allowed to take, uh, if you're a graduate student, six units per semester, and if you're an undergrad, 12 units per semester. Now, beyond that, you have to seek the approval of your program chair to um, take more uh, or additional units. There are two reasons. First, a lot of you are doing this part-time, meaning you have full-time work aside from your studies. So taking more than six or 12 would be more than no, what you can take no, in a semester. Secondly, there's also um, in distance education, the students or the uh, learners also um, perform more no, or are required to do more than their counterparts in conventional learning. Like for instance, in conventional learning, all you have to do is attend the class, listen to the lecture, just like what you are doing right now. It doesn't necessarily matter whether you are listening or understanding what I'm saying right now or not. No? You just have to make yourself appear <laughs> that you are listening to the faculty in charge. But if you're not prepared, it's, it's more noticeable dun sa ano eh, distance learning. Kasi for instance, in online discussion, some students would participate without reading the modules. And it's quite obvious if you haven't read the materials. No? Parang nambobola ka lang doon. And uh, in large classes, mas makikita ng mga classmates mo yung pambobola mo. No? And it's more permanent because it's reposted there in text form. People can scrutinize your work. So it's important to do the the uh, required activities like read the module, view the videos, no, and try to understand. You will be required to read different kinds of materials. Some are websites, some are reports, some are journal articles. It depends on the topic. Now, if you are reading, these materials were not written in, uh, primarily for you as a learner. No? Like for instance, a journal article is probably written for another researcher in mind. No? But in distance learning, you have to read the material in relation to the learning objectives that are stated in the module. Kasi normally, sa module natin, whether you have a 
a print module, a book module, or a uh, study guide. Uh, before I discuss now yung, yung mga tips ko, there are two types of uh, modules. No? First, for undergrad students, more often than not, you would have your uh, standalone printed book no? module that is akin to a book. Uh, yung pinakita kanina sa video, yun yung mga yun with nice cover, ganon. No? Pero even if they appear as textbooks, they are not eg exactly textbooks. Uh, they are written in modular form. Meaning, ang module kasi, learning chunks yan. Dinesign yan as to, uh, ito yung uh, portion na dapat kong malaman for this topic, skill na dapat kong matutunan for a certain period of time. So, nung dinesign yung inyong course, alam na ng teacher at ng instructional designer, for this period of time, like one week, ito lang kaya ng estudyante. So, i-design natin yung module na ito lang. No? Hindi siya equivalent to a chapter in a book. Kasi sa chapter, pwede mo yung kahit ilang araw, ilang linggo mo yung basahin. No? Pero doon, ito lang. No? So, at the start of each module, nakalagay yan. At the end of this module, you are expected to define such and such, analyze such and such, or apply such and such. No? For those who will be taking PPC, no? Yun, kailangan ma-wrap ano ma ma yourselves around that idea na. No? That's part of teaching and learning. Ngayon, as a student, aware kayo dapat dun sa learning objectives na yan. In the standalone modules, yung parang books, right after the learning objectives, meron na yung discussion of the lessons. And there are self-assessment activities uh, in between the topics no? that allows you to test your understanding of the lessons. Now, for um, other courses like BAMs, no, they wouldn't have these um, books or textbooks. No, they would have what we call resource learn a uh, resource based learning course package, which means uh, even I think in PTC, no, that's how it goes. Um, you have a study guide or expanded course guide. Uh, the teacher uh, also uh, identifies a different modules in that course and for each module he or she also lists down the course objectives the learning objectives and then the teacher would uh, tell you what uh, materials to read what videos to view no nandun din yon and then he or she would also have some questions no guide questions no to enable you to ponder on the materials that you were required to read no parang ginaguide niya kayo when you read this module, these are the things that you need to understand, to focus on, and to retain. You know? And then, in some cases, the teacher would also uh, include some self-assessment activities. It could be a quiz you know, that you can just do on your own. It could be in the study guide, you know, which is in PDF format, or it could be incorporated in the, the course site itself, meaning there are online quizzes there. Now, after you have read the materials, you go to the course site and do your own self-assessment in the online quiz. Some would be graded, some are not. It depends on the teacher. No? So, when you are reading these materials, no, my tip is to always ask yourself, what is this material telling me about the topic at hand? No? Ano yung tinuturo nito sa akin? Kasi not all of the, sometimes not all of the things that are listed in the, that are written in the material, no, like a journal article, would directly apply or would be specific no, to the topic being discussed in class. But there are some aspects of the material that would talk about the topic. No? So you have to be um, conscious of that when you are reading the material. So what's the advantage of this? No? If you are bakit hindi na lang isulat it i like i sulat na lang ng teacher lahat ng gusto niya sabihin bakit hindi na lang niya let's say i video yung sarili niya and that becomes part of the lecture the good thing about reading different resources is that you are trained to read different kinds of literature you are trained uh, to appreciate different perspectives Kasi kung ang teacher lang ang nagsasalta, just like what I'm doing, you are, you are just getting my own perspective of things. 
there could be other perspectives, different ways of looking at the same reality. And in real life, more often than not, multiple ang ideas ng mga tao sa mga bagay-bagay. If it wasn't, then sana we live in a perfect harmonious world, no? <laughs> na hindi naman ganon. And in the discussion forum, you are allowed to express all these different ideas and perspectives. But you have to be respectful of other people's ideas as well. No? Kasi kung hindi, magkakagulo tayo. And in, when that happens, nai-impede yung ating learning process. So any other question? Writing assignments. Um, my tip for you is to read the questions, especially for essays, no? Or case studies and the like. Read the questions very carefully. Read them several times. If you have any que problems, ask your tutor, or FIC, or even your classmates, no? Their understanding. Um, there's no stopping you from interacting with one another, no? Without the knowledge of the teacher. Pero, <laughs> Baka mamaya, mali din yung understanding nyo. It would be like the blind, guiding the blind, no? So, better ask your teacher as well, no? But you can also form your different groups, uh, study groups among yourselves within the class. No? That's all right. Um, the, I think my advice would be for you to come up with an outline first, no? Of your ideas before writing it down. Para hindi nag, uh, ano, nag rumble na paikot-ikot. Be straight to the point. Be clear about your arguments, especially in essays, in uh, research papers and analysis. Be clear about what you would like to say, no? So, and be able to articulate that and provide evidences to support it. Now, the evidences can come in the form of the uh, modules, readings, the videos that were required by the teacher for you to read or view. It could come from a book that you have borrowed from the library. It could be from a journal article that you have downloaded from our online library catalog. Or it could be based on your personal experience. No? You should be able to tie all of those up no? when, when writing. And, and um, spec, you spell check, no? That uh, wouldn't hurt, no? Um, make sure that it's um, uh, okay yung spelling. Um, kasi even if your idea is good, but if it's um, haphazardly done or written, it also affects yung marking nung, nung inyong ano. Normally, the teacher would have a criteria, set of criteria for assessment. It could be as simple as... Uh, parang list of uh, criteria with specific weights no percentages or it could be a an elaborate rubrics no talagang ito yung mga characteristics 10 points ito yung mga characteristics 20 points may may ganyan no may mga teachers na ganun so make sure na i-match niyo yung assignment niyo base dun sa criteria na binigay sa inyo no? and we have some resources in the library that you can use no there are mga guidebooks no on how to write a uh, good assignments no when the teacher requires you to do, uh, do an assignment uh, in a maximum of, let's say, 10 pages, dapat 10 pages lang. Wag na kayong lalagpas doon. Some uh, teachers would require maximum in terms of number of words. Ganun din yun, no? Some teachers would be more open. Hindi niya sasabihin. No? So, ano lang yun? Uh, tatanungin nyo na lang sa FIC kung hindi kayo klaro doon. And of course, yung assigned uh, exams. Normally, the assignments are designed as preparation for the examination. So, it would also do you good if you review the assignments and the teacher's feedback on the assignment for the examination. And then, um, mahirap talaga mag -cram, but uh, everybody's uh, at fault, no? Even... Uh, Kami, no, as students, inaamin namin, we were also uh, cramming no, at some points in our lives, student lives. Pero it would help you na ma-chunk nyo yung pag-aaral nyo all throughout the semester. 
kasi may mga estudyante na nagkukumahog at the end of the semester. Pagka ganun kasi, syempre, uh, yung absorption capacity din natin, limited. So, nahihirapan din tayo. So, how do we manage our time? If that's the case, anybody, who, uh, all of you, uh, eh, nagtatrabaho ba? Merong full-time student among us? Full-time ba or nag-work din part-time iba? Or full-time? Sino full-time student sa atin? Sino ang part-time student? Okay. So, marami din nag, merong other concerns aside from studies, no? So, yung ibang student, ang ginagawa nila, they would set um, a schedule for themselves just like as if they're also attending regular classes. Na 6 to 8 MWF, ito yung time ko for reading, for making assignments. Talaga nag-stick sila doon. There are some students na ginagawa nila on weekends. The whole Saturday, yun ang kanilang study time. But for some, hindi pa rin nila magawa yun. So, some, sometimes intermittent yan. Like they would, parang yung lunch time nila, no? doon sila nagbabasa. Tapos sinisingit-singit nila yon. So it depends on your needs and your availability. You, you, you do your own schedule, but make sure that you stick to that schedule. And then uh, seek the support of your family members, especially for those who have their own families already. No? Um, I'm sure bago kayo nag-decide mag-aral, alam yan, let's say, ng spouse nyo or ng parents nyo. No? Like for instance, siyempre, especially for working mothers, i-schedule din, tutulong din sana ang ibang family members, no? especially if you don't have household help, para sa pag-schedule ng mga activities. So that you are able to uh, meet your, uh, the demands of your work, family, and studies at the same time. It is possible. It, there would be some difficulties, roadblocks along the way, but it is highly possible, highly probable. And uh, a lot of our students have already proven that. And um, for those who are take, anybody's taking associate in arts? Wala dito, pero I'm sure in other learning centers, no? Those uh, who finish our um, associate in arts and transfer to other campuses, most of them do quite well in the residential campuses. Kasi nga, they have already uh, acquired the discipline, the self-initiative, the motivation for learning, the inquisitiveness, no? Ability to look for resources, uh, uh, for information, for knowledge, if, they, if they're not available. Sometimes, hindi nyo naiintindihan yung binigay na, re na reading materials ng teachers nyo. It's up to you to find similar materials that you could understand use the resources available on the net. If there is an article that you find technical, look for a book in the library that would uh, explain the same concepts in a more uh, reader-friendly manner. No? And then read the article again, the more technical article, para mas maintindihan yun. So these are just some tips no, that you could use to improve your learning, to enhance your learning. So if there are, is there, uh, are there questions from the, ano, wala, from our, so on that note, uh, I would like to thank everyone. If you have any question, the, e the contact uh, email addresses are on the website. Thank you. Okay, so wala pang nagtanong. The re reserve nila mamaya, sir. <laughs> okay. So thank you, sir, for very informative thoughts and tips you know, as the e-learners. And now to give us the academic procedures and policies from uh, the University of Registrars yeah. itself, <laughs> Dr. Ricardo Bagarinao. Good morning, everyone. Uh, sa mga Estudyante from the Visayas region, mayong buntag, kanyang tanan. 
Okay. So in behalf, again, in behalf of the different officials of the university, the chancellor, vice chancellors, and other uh, officials, uh, I would like to welcome you all to the University of the Philippines Open University. Okay. So this is UP Open University. It's different from UP Los Banos, UP Diliman, or UP Manila, or UP Visayas in the Visayan region, and UP Mindanao in Mindanao. Okay. So there are cases wherein our students somehow ha have been confused uh, kung kaninong estudyante sila. Okay. So UP Open University is the fifth constituent university of the UP system. So it's different from the other UP campuses. Okay, so this morning I'll be talking about uh, the academic policies uh, that could somehow guide you, uh, especially in your stay in the university, okay, uh, with your program. Okay, so uh, before discussing further, I would like to con congratulate you for having it at UP Open University, okay, your uh, among the chosen few. By the way, sino ditong nag-umpisa, uh, no, na na nag-take ng upcut? Good, okay. So congratulations again. Okay, so we have actually three types of admission in the university. And uh, we have the regular, the probationary, and provisional. Okay. When we speak of regular, it means that you have uh, passed all the program requirements. Okay. Uh, in, in your case, for example, the undergrad, you have passed the admission test, and uh, both the UPCAT and the undergraduate admi admission test uh, administered by UP Open University. And also the de readiness test. Okay, I hope you have taken that one also. For the probationary, it means that uh, somehow there is uh, for, for uh, the graduate programs, for example, uh, there is uh, either one at least one program requirement that you have not satisfied. For example, you have a uh, uh, grade no the GWA. Okay of lower than what is being required by the program okay for example the mbe for example okay for provisional uh this means that you lack at least one uh documentary requirement of the program so most of the time it is the valid tor okay okay uh there are some students na iniisip nila dahil original yung TOR na sinabit nila that's already valid okay but uh, we are looking for some uh, remarks in the transcript of records that somehow will make the TOR valid and we have here the list okay of uh, remarks that will make any TOR valid or invalid mukhang nawawala na ang mic okay so, for example, uh, a valid TOR will have a remarks. Okay, will have a remarks, uh, a copy for UP Open University, or uh, we have also a remark. Okay, for board examination and so on and so forth. Okay, though it is uh, original and it has the seal of your uh, previous university or school. Okay, but if your TUR will have those remarks on the left, okay, for reference only, for salary adjustment, and so on and so on, not valid for as transfer creden uh, credentials. Okay, so uh, that TUR will have will be uh, an invalid TUR, though it is original and has the seal of the university. Okay, uh, for academic advising, uh, in, in most cases, for example, in, in your program, you may encounter some courses that have uh, prerequisites. Okay? 
uh, as a policy, if you have not taken or passed the prerequisite, you would not be able to take the, the, that particular course. Okay? But in some cases, for example, uh, na nakuha mo na siya, kaso lang medyo bumagsak ka doon, okay? you may ask your program chair for academic advising and you may request for waiving the prerequisite, okay? especially if the prerequisite will not be offered in the next term. Okay? But the decision will be on the program chair. Or in your faculty of study. Now, uh, registration. Uh, I think this uh, very important part. Okay, very important process in, in your student life in the university, okay? because you will not be considered as uh, officially registered if you would not be able to undergo this process. Uh, for UP Open University, we usually encourage our students to strictly follow the registration period. Okay, so uh, I, I think it was last 2011-2012 uh, where we have implemented the online registration system. Okay, and I hope you you have experienced that one. Okay, I, I do believe you have experienced that one for this term. Uh, we usually set the, the period for the online system according to what has been approved by the Board of Regents based on the academic calendar. Okay? So the system will be open okay, within that period. So beyond that period, you would no longer be able to access the system. That is why we encourage our students to really uh, enroll okay, uh, w within that period that is being allowed. Okay, by the Board of Regents. Now, uh, in case you would miss the registration period, okay, uh, for some reasons, uh, especially for, for our students, where most of our students are working, okay, uh, and you observe that the period may be in conflict with your working schedule. So you should have to inform us in advance. Okay? And the program advising, which is very important uh, for, for the registration period because it is here where you will know uh, what courses to take in a term and so on and so forth. Usually it is being done two weeks prior okay, to the registration. That is why we, again, we encourage you to uh, seek advice from your program chair at least two weeks before the registration period so that during enrollment, alam nyo na kung ano yung kukunin. Okay? Now, there are some cases wherein uh, courses are not being offered, okay? especially for graduating students. Okay? Courses may not be offered in a particular term. Okay? And you are supposed to be graduating okay, in the following term. Okay? So you may uh, request for cross-registration. So when you say cross-registration, uh, you will be taking uh, courses from other UP campuses. Okay? It, may be from, uh, it may be in UP Los Baños, UP Diliman, or it may be in UP Visayas for those who are uh, living in the Visayas region or in Mindanao for those who are living in Mindanao. Okay? Now, before you can cross-register, you should have to seek approval from your program chair. Okay? You should have to uh, talk with your program chair and ask whether you, can, you will be allowed to cross-register uh, that particular course that you want to take in UP campuses, in other UP uh, constituent university. Okay? Now, uh, we have a specific policy regarding cross-registration because you can, uh, you, should, you should be able to enroll at least 50% uh, of the total number of units that is required of your program. So it means, uh, for example, uh, you 
you have some units prior okay uh, enrolling to UP Open University you can later we can we can discuss that and you, you can apply for a transfer of credits okay and uh, that 50% okay should be a sum or a total for for the transfer of credits and the one that you will be cross registering from or in uh, other UP campuses so meaning if you would not be very careful in looking at the total number of units that you have al already taken okay uh, from from other universities and uh, you will just cross reg cross reg every time it is possible that some of those courses may not be okay, credited towards your program okay that is why uh, we usually encourage our students to take the courses that is uh, that are being offered at UP Open University, at UPOU. Uh, you should have to prioritize these courses. Okay, you should only seek uh, a request for cross registration in case, okay, in case uh, there are course uh, there are courses that you need to take, and yet they are not being offered in the university. Okay. Now, in terms of normal load, we usually give uh, allow uh, 12 units for the undergrad and a maximum of uh, six units for the graduate program, so graduate students. Okay, so these are the normal load for our students. But in some cases, you may uh, request for overloading, okay, from your program chair. So you may uh, request. For example, if that will be the last term that you will be in UPU in your program, and you still have, for example, 15 units to take, okay? If you think you can uh, make, okay, all the rigors of these 15 units, okay, within that term, then why not, okay? Why not seek some uh, approval from your program chair? Now, there are some cases wherein you have already enrolled in your courses, for example, for that particular term. And all of a sudden, uh, especially those working students, all of a sudden there is a conflict okay, in, in your working schedule, for example. You have been promoted, for example, from a clerk, you become the manager of a particular firm, for example, and you will be uh, sent to... United States, for example, or Japan for a six-month training, okay? And you think you, you would not be able to uh, prioritize or you cannot add to your schedule your courses or your classes during the term. So before the start of the class, you can actually withdraw, okay, your enrollment for that particular term. Now, uh, if you will withdraw your enrollment before the start of the class, then you can be refunded of some of the matriculation fees. Okay, so you can uh, request for a refund. Okay. But uh, if it will be uh, before the, the first study session and for trimestral uh, programs, usually uh, I think it's three weeks. Okay, uh, if you will be withdrawing your uh, enrollment within that period, you will be refunded uh, at least 80%, okay? 80% of those uh, items in the matriculation that can be refunded, okay? Now, beyond the first study session, you, you cannot withdraw, okay? So, uh, it's already for, for dropping, okay? So, you will, your... Uh, there is a difference between withdrawal at saka yung dropping, okay? So when, when you withdraw your enrollment from for a particular term, okay, it means that you will have no records that you have enrolled, okay, in that particular term. Now, uh, for, for dropping, uh, yung records mo will remain and you will have a grade of DRP at the end of the term. Okay, that is why uh, if you really think you cannot 
uh, do both studying and your work okay especially for those who are working uh, I think you you have to decide if you don't want to have records that you have draft and so on and so forth in your transcript of records leave of absence okay now there are again some cases wherein uh, you think you need to leave from the university for a while okay so you need to file a leave of absence Okay, just like in any work, okay, di ba, pag nag-absent ka sa work mo, you need to file official leave, okay? So the same thing, so that you you will, you would not be considered as a wall, okay? Uh, absent without leave, so you need to file this uh, application. And uh, the consequence for uh, having, or for not having filed any official leave from the university, when you go back, okay, uh, to the university, you need to apply for readmission. Okay, so your readmission application will be evaluated by the program chair. Okay, or they may have some committee in re-evaluating your uh, in evaluating your readmission application, and it may be possible that you would not be re-accepted. So that is why uh, you need to have a, an official leave of absence okay, if you think you need to leave for a while from the university. For example, if you are sick, for example, uh, and you think you, you need to take rest for a certain period of time, then you need to have uh, filed this application for leave of absence. Now, uh, this is also very important because our examination papers will be sent to your learning center. Okay, so if you are in UP Los Banos, uh, Los Banos, in Los Banos Learning Center, okay, so your examination papers will be sent to the learning center at uh, at the head headquarter. So we call this campus the headquarter of UP Open University. Okay, now, uh, for example, you're working and you will be assigned to Iloilo, for example, okay? And uh, nagkataon na yung assignment mo doon will be during the midterm examination or final examination or, examination or any long examinations in your course. So you need to inform your learning center and your faculty of study that you will be taking the examination in... Iloilo Learning Center, okay, so that the examination paper, which is supposedly to be sent, okay, at uh, LB Learning Center, it will be sent to the Iloilo Learning Center, okay. Again, you need to inform your faculty of study, okay. And the same thing with the date, okay, so if you think uh, you need to take the examination in a different date, Okay, you you need to inform you you, you need to request, but it, it doesn't mean. But uh, once you request, okay, for a change of date of your examination, it will be approved. Okay, so there is a possibility that it will not be approved. Okay, but then again, you you need to inform your faculty of study. Grading system we usually follow the UP grading system where one is the highest, okay, and five is the failing grade okay we have also uh, the passing is three we have an, an uh, conditional pass which is four and instead of having the INC which is the grade uh, in the residential mode we have a XT okay a XT extended grade what does it mean okay the XT usually is given to students who have missed to uh, submit at least one requirement or satisfy one course requirement. For example, if there are some uh, faculties in charge, okay, who will give XT if the student fails to take the final examination, for example, or the midterm examination, or fails to submit uh, one assignment, for example. But there are some faculties in charge 
who are more strict that uh, at the end of the term, when you fail to uh, submit or satisfy one of the requirements, they will give grade of five. Okay? That is why as part of the discussion kanina, you need to look at the course guide. Ano ba ang uh, policy, house rules, okay, ng faculty in charge nyo. Otherwise, you may miss, okay, uh, at the end of, of the term, masyasyaka na lang, ha, bakit five ako dito? Okay? Dahil na mismo basahin yung house rules. Okay. Now, uh, AXT and grade 4, uh, usually, once you, you incur okay, this grade at the end of the term, you have only one year, okay, either to complete or to remove a grade of 4. Complete a grade of AXT or remove a grade of 4. Now, after one year, okay, medyo dahil busy ka, tapos nakaligtaan mo na may XT ka pala. For example, anong courses uh, kinuha niyo ngayon? For example, yung 2, okay? Na XT ka sa yung 2 for this term. Tapos uh, nakaligtaan mo siya. Umabot na ng one year. So, instead of having that uh, chance to remove or complete yung grade of XT, you need to re-enroll. Okay? Yung 2. Sayang naman yung 3,000 <laughs> na matriculation. Okay? Bukod pa sa miscellaneous. Okay? So, that is why you, you should be vigilant. Okay, uh, about your grades. Kung may grade of 4 ka, huwag naman sana, okay, grade of XT, then you should know, okay, kung kailan sila mag-lapse yung, yung one year na yun. In fact, I would suggest na if you have grade of XT, for example, then submit ka agad yung lacking requirements, okay, because you will be informed the, the requirements that you need to submit, okay, or if it is an examination you need to take. Okay. Uh, transfer of credits. Okay. Usually, uh, we allow to ha have a transfer of credits of a total of 50% uh, you know, of the total number of units in your program. But it will depend on the decision of the program chair and your faculty who study, the dean. Okay. So, it's not automatic. For example, if you have taken some courses in UP Los Banos, for example, GE courses, for example, and uh, you have uh, 30 units, for example, under the arts and humanities domain, for example. Uh, in GE, in UP, usually we have what we call as RGEP. I don't know if you have heard such thing revitalize G program uh, in UP system, okay? And it is being categorized into three domains, okay? We have arts and humanities, uh, math, science and technology, and we have also the social science, okay? Now, for each domain, you only, you are required to uh, take and pass uh, 15 units for each domain. So, all in all, you, you should have a G of uh, 45 units. For example, you have GE courses taken in uh, from UP Los Banos, for example, but they are all under the math, science, and technology, for example, domain. Okay, So if you have 30, for example, uh, maybe 15 units can be credited towards, okay, can be transferred okay, towards your program. The, the other 15, uh, medyo hindi na siya mano dahil under siya sa MST and so on and so forth. Okay? But then again, the, the decision or the approval will be uh, by the program chair and uh, the dean of your faculty of study. Well, graduation na. Okay? So, 
graduation requirements, of course, you need to uh, satisfy all the graduation requirements of your program. In graduate uh, programs, for example, if there is a thesis as required by your program, you need to successfully defend your thesis. If there is a comprehensive examination, you need to take and pass that examination. Or in the undergrad, if you have a thesis in your undergrad, then you need to uh, successfully defend and submit the manuscript. So whatever program requirements that you have for graduation, you need to satisfy all of these things. Okay. Uh, your uh, b before you will be evaluated for gradu graduation, you need to apply for graduation. If, if you think you will be graduating, for example, in that particular term, you need to apply for graduation, okay, so that you will be considered and you, your records will be uh, verified and evaluated whether you are qualified to graduate or not, okay. And uh, also, uh, you need to, okay, once you have completed uh, once you have completed or almost completing your program and uh, the, the number of units, for example, of your program, then you need to apply and you need to make sure that you don't have AXTs, okay? You don't have force, okay? If you have AXTs, you need to complete them, okay? If you have four, you need, you need to remove those grades of four. Okay, uh, just like in any other uh, constituent university of UP, we also have some students who will be graduating with honors. Okay? And we have, for, for the undergrad, we have the Latin honors. Uh, we have the Suma, Magna, and Cum Laude. And for the graduate programs, we have uh, what we call as the chancellors and the deans. Least. Okay. And of course, these honors will have to have grade requirements. Okay. So for uh, so SUMA, for example, you have, uh, I think, 1.20 as the minimum, okay, the absolute minimum weighted average required for SUMA. For the cum laude, I think it's 1.75. Okay. For magna, I think 1.45. Okay. And uh, there are other requirements that you need to satisfy before you can be uh, graduating with honors. For example, the number of units, okay, you should not go beyond the normal load of 12 for undergrad, okay. And uh, in terms of residency, for example, in the university, you need to have at least 75%, okay, of your, uh, the, the total number of units, okay, should be taken in, in the university. Otherwise, you will not be considered. Though your uh, graded, uh, general weighted average okay, has met the, the requirement for that honor, but if you fail to satisfy the other requirements, then you cannot be recommended to graduate with honors. Okay, so commencement exercises. Graduation, huh? Okay, so uh, I think all of the UP constituent universities are now using yung sablay. Okay, so this is different from other universities. Okay, so this is the official uh, costume that you need to wear during commencement exercises. Attendance to the commence commencement exercise is optional. Okay, so you can inform your faculty of study that you will not attend in the graduation ceremony, but it's one, di ba, once in a lifetime na, na event, okay? So we encourage you to to join, okay, this uh, activity, important activity actually uh, in your life as a student, okay? Uh, the graduation ceremony of UPUU is 
It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, we will be having our graduation ceremony actually this coming May 4. Okay, that's this coming Saturday. If you have time, maybe you can watch. Okay, and I think it will be uh, web stream also live. Okay, so you can watch if you have if you have time. Okay, so that you will have. Uh, yung iba naman na in-invite namin na mga estudyante hindi pa graduating, sabi nila, wag na lang, baka mawala yung thrill <laughs> kung makita namin yung graduation. Okay? Now, uh, of course, after completing all your document, uh, all, all the program requirements, okay, then you need to have your documents, academic documents. Okay? So, we have the transcript of records, for example, the diploma, uh, honorable dismissal, and so on and so forth. Okay, so before you can uh, get these uh, documents from us, you need to have uh, an approved university cl clearance. Okay, so your clearance will be routed to the different uh, offices to make sure that you don't have any accountabilities, remaining accountabilities in the university. Okay. And once you have this uh, university clearance, then you can now request for transcript of records or you can get your diploma. And we're trying our best, especially in the office of the university registrar, we're trying our best that we would be able to give these documents even before okay, the graduation ceremony. So the day before uh, graduation, the, the students should be able to get okay, these different documents. That is why beforehand, you need to have the university clearance being signed by the different uh, signatories of that uh, particular form. Okay? So that when you come uh, on the day before the commencement exercises, you would be able to get your diploma if, they are, if it is already available and the transcript of records so that when you go home, okay, especially those students who are living in other provinces or those who are in other countries, for example, and they will be attending the commencement exercises. So when they go home, they will be bringing with them these uh, documents. Okay, All you need to have is just the university clearance. Okay. So if you have some questions, if you have some uh, clarifications, you can visit these sites, okay? And the kind of information that you can get from, from these contact informations. Next slide. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so if you have questions, clarifications, Wala? Hindi nyo na ako makikita. <laughs> okay, sa mga estudyante nating nag-access sa uh, web stream. Okay, mukhang naintindihan nyo naman eh. At mukhang exciting na kayo. <laughs> Okay, the start of the class will be May 4, okay? So, uh, by the way, I just want to announce in advance that uh, hopefully if, because I, I don't know if you have heard about EUP, okay? Uh, this is a project of the current administration to have one online system for all constituent universities okay and we are now developing the student academic information system okay which will also include the different processes academic processes for example registration uh, admission filing of uh, transcript of records up to graduation okay so hopefully we're we're targeting to have this system up by second term, second trimester, okay? And that will be in August, okay? 
and uh, the current system that we have right now is the one that is being developed by UP Open University. So in the second trimester, it will be a different system that you will be using uh, in registration. Okay, but uh, uh, before it will be implemented in August, we're going to have some, I think, trainings for, for our students just to familiarize and be oriented with the new system. This system will be used by all constituent universities of UP. Okay? And uh, nakita na namin yung system, medyo complicated siya, but it's very helpful, especially for, for the students. Because there, you will be able to see how many units that we have enrolled na and how many units that you need to enroll pa. Okay? So, by, by, by uh, using that system, you may be able to have yung self-advising. Okay? And you will be able to plan okay, the, the courses that you're going to take uh, for the succeeding terms while you're still staying in the university. Okay? Questions? Regarding policies? Now, nawaan naman po natin yung mga policies. Okay? Uh, another one I would like to reiterate. Okay? If, kasi this is a common, ano eh, common case that we observe from our students. Uh, if you need some information and syempre because you're at a distance, di ba? Parang sino ang tatanungin ko? Okay? Sino ang pupuntahan ko? Unlike in residential that you can ask your classmates or your, faculty, uh, your, your instructor, for example. But in distance education, as what has been discussed a while ago, you are being separated geographically. Okay? If you have some, if you need some information, for example, uh, our website, okay, may be the first one to access, okay? Maybe the information is already in the website, it's being posted in the website. Okay? Now, if there is none, then if it is uh, more on academic, for example, you want to get uh, to know what courses to take, in the next term, for example, or you want to know whether your uh, application for transfer of credits okay, has been approved already, okay, uh, I think you need to contact your program chair. Okay? So by this time, dapat kilala nyo na ang inyong mga program chairs. Right? Sino ang program chair ng BAS? May BES ba dito na student? Wala. Lahat lang ng ba ah, BAMS yung nandito. At saka PPC. Sino ang program chair ng BAMS? Uh, okay. So, anong faculty of study ang BAMS? For sure, dapat alam nyo yun. By now. Hindi <laughs> okay, for BAMS, uh, BAMS is under the Faculty of Information Communication Studies. Okay, uh, the dean is uh, Dr. Uh, Melinda Bandalaria, and the program chair is Professor Assistant Professor Catherine St Steves. Okay. So you have you have the contact information of these people in the website. Okay. So to yon. So kailangan yung ma familiarize. Sino ba ang mga taong pupuntahan namin? In case may ganito kami pangangailangan. PTC. Alam niyo kung anong faculty of study ang PTC. Sino ang PTC dito? Alam niyo kung hindi rin. Faculty of Education. Okay, so Faculty of Education. So the PTC actually is not a degree program. It's a non-formal, 
ah, non formal. It's a formal non degree na program. Okay, it's a certification program actually. Okay, and it is being intended for those who are non education graduates who want to take the licensure exam. The licensure examination for teachers. Okay, I don't know if uh, PRS is now requiring requiring the thirty two units. Di ba? Uh, parang may additional ano yun eh? May additional uh, thirty units pala. May additional na twelve units practicum. Na ano? Pero I, I don't know if this already being implemented. For now, it's still the eighteen. Okay, is required to for taking the licensure examination. Okay. Okay, so then alam naman natin kung ano ang trimestral, di ba? Okay. So wala nang summer for trimestral, ha? Okay, so we have first trimester, second and third, okay? Because there are some students uh undergrads specifically they were asking kailan po ang summer ng ano ng ganitong program and so on and so forth. Okay? So, under trimestral, so wala na yung summer. And, uh, well, uh, the, the number of weeks is usually being reduced in the trimestral. Okay? So, sino dito nakaano na ng distance education experience? Ng distance education, homeschooling, for example, Wala pa. So, the, the, the whole banana is new to you. Okay. So, I hope you have uh, retained those tips that, was, uh, that were being discussed a while ago. So, if you need, again, if you need some information, try to know whom to contact. Okay? For, for program advising, you should have to contact your program chair. If it deals with... Uh, issues or concerns about your course okay if it is a course specific you need to contact your faculty in charge okay if it is more on administrative you may contact your faculty of study okay so or learning center for example you want to know how should i apply for a uh, true copy of grades for example but i think the procedure is uh, posted in the website okay so you need to go to the website then just try to look at there are some information that are for student use in the web website okay so any questions talagang wala good <laughs> sa ating mga viewers online wala din Wow, gagaling na mga sadyanting ito. <laughs> Di nagtatanong. Okay, so with that, again, thank you for coming for this genera general orientation. And again, welcome to UP Open University. Hey, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> so, naiintindihan natin lahat. Wala kasing question, eh, no? Okay, thank you very much, and we will end this program by ano, singing UP Naming Mahal. Then next noon, ito kasi graduation. <laughs> so let's uh, all stand for the...
Oh, my God.